I brought some of the wood carving from uh, before the show, but I have also made quite a few uh, gourd carvings, especially for this show. And um, so in the case behind me, they are all gourds, particularly for this show. These gourds are gourds that I grew in my garden in Tacoma Park. So I thought that would be interesting hometown com uh, uh, combination of artwork as well as um, the products from the garden. I do weavings including interesting items for people, uh, maybe their dress or a family heirloom, like um, I have a family a dress, a red dress back there that was one of my ancestors that I wove into a piece. It's the kind of thing that maybe you have something in a closet and you think, wow, I really wish I could look at that more often than once a year when I go through my stuff. So it's nice to make it a piece that you can put on the wall and appreciate it, the memory from it. I have photographs of botanical specimens and I like to photograph things mostly after they've dried and so they don't really resemble the plants that you think of. Like I have some Japanese iris over there that are the dried pods. This is a tomatillo which is really about this big and it's after the winter's over and it was left on the plant and it all the only things left is this sort of um, framework structure of the vegetable. So I like things when they're dried and they, um, they, it's sort of the next phase. Sometimes it's the seeds, the seed pods, but not the plant in bloom. I like the sculptural qualities that happen after that. I come up with an idea I will go over and with a vision in my head I look at them almost like a beauty pageant and uh, keep looking at them and see which one has the shape and also the flow that will fit with the uh, subject matter better and I pick that one and then um, say uh, uh, behind me I have uh, some gourd that is uh, carved with peonies and given its round full shape I want something that is fuller and more balanced and I pick a gourd like this and then in my head I have to figure out the composition how to how to make it varied but overall as you turn the the gourd around to look at the individual carving that is a flow and it still feels balanced the way I do it is I have to draw the the um, patterns out and then put them on the gourd and and make out a composition that I really like and then I actually trace them back on the gourd instead of drawing directly because the gourd is uh, has such a delicate surface if you draw it over and over and correct actually you can damage the surface after drawing then I carve all with one knife and then after that I still have to go through quite a tedious process of coloring and the coloring um, uh, for those who come to the show, we'll, we'll get to see the explanation here. But um, the brilliant red color actually is not a paint. Uh, I chose to use something called seal paste to color it bit by bit. And so it, it sounds really kind of crazy because I actually shape a bamboo stick uh, so that it can fit into the little cuts. And then I use the bamboo stick to pick out little bits of the uh, seal paste, which is a combination of a red mineral uh, and a castor oil, as well as a bits of silk. And so it's so thick that you can only pick up a little bit at a time and rub it onto the onto the cut. And then after this is all done, you clean it all up and then seal it again. And so it really takes a very long time. The technique is really about using what I have on hand. Um, I have a lot of performance clothing, so if I find that one of my favorite dresses has a hole in it, um, maybe a pink psychedelic dress or something, I'm going to want to use that fabric because it's really beautiful and special to me. So then I try to match, oh, I have a green sock, I'm going to throw that in there, you know, something like that. I photograph them digitally 
and I do like to photograph things very up close, like this one right here is this big, but in reality the tomatillo is this big. So I like photographing things up close so that it makes you take a really good close look at things that you might not otherwise look closely at. And I print them digitally, I print them on a Japanese paper. It's called Kirikata. It's a Gampi paper. And I like the quality that, um, that that gives. It's not a slick photograph. And it's a, it's a paper usually used for printmaking, so it's not a photographic paper. And I just like the fact that it kind of looks a little, a little softer than if it was printed on a photographic paper. And the paper's a little bit green. It's a little bit translucent. And so I just, I feel like the, the paper is part of the object of the artwork. I like leaving the, the ripped and torn edges exposed so that you really have a sense of the paper and not just the image. Tacoma Park is so special to me. I perform over at Rhizome a lot, so I like to be here and part of the community in a music sense, and now I get to be as an artist, and that's really exciting for me. I think events like this is really wonderful because um, one is for people like me, uh, we get to show our artwork to the world, to the community, so that people know that actually among them, there are people quietly working on things like this. We may not be like earth-breaking artists, but we, we look at the world a certain way and try to create something of beauty, of value. And we would like to share our view with our neighbors and uh, people in the community. 